we shall reign in life by one Jesus. You know, at the right hand of God, as our high priest, and if he's our high priest forever, it tells us one thing, we are blessed forever. Don't you know that? You are blessed forever. You have to know that. You are blessed forever. Puri na Panginoon. Glory to God. Are you ready for more of the Gospel of Jesus Christ today? Nabuksan po natin, abaral ako sulatan po natin sa Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24, verse 27. Luke 24, verse 27. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which are written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Down, down to verse 27. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And then verse 44, chapter, uh, 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 verse 44, And he said unto them, These are the words which I speak unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Now, we don't have to, the time to, to read all the verses, but to give you a background, ito po ay nangyari after the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Right after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, meron pong dalawang disciples ang ating Panginoon na sila po'y naglalakad patungo po sa lugar na kung tawagin po Emmaus. They were walking on their way to Emmaus. Now, these two disciples were uh, uh, were uh, were disciples of Jesus Christ that were part of the 70 other disciples. Hindi po sila kabilang doon sa 12 disciples like Peter, James, and John. Sila po yung mga disciples ng Panginoon na kabilang po doon sa tinatawag na other disciples of Jesus Christ. We need to understand that although Jesus Christ had His 12 disciples, pero maliban po sa labing dalawa, meron pa pong ibang mga disciples ang ating Panginoon Jesus. Okay? And the Bible tells us that at least there, there were 72 other disciples. At itong dalawang ito, sila po'y naglalakad at pinag-uusapan po nila yung nangyari doon sa Jerusalem. Pinag-uusapan po nila na si Jesus na taga Nazareth ay namatay at siya po ay inilibing. At uh, that particular day, in the morning, meron silang nabalitaan na yung kanyang katawan ay hindi matagpuan doon sa kanyang libingan. So pinag-uusapan po ng dalawa ito and then Jesus Christ joined these two disciples. Okay? At nagtanong nga ating Panginoon, ano bang pinag-uusapan ninyo? At uh, sabi po ng dalawa, hindi mo ba alam? Ikaw ba'y estranghero? Are you a stranger? Don't you know what happened? Okay? These uh, several days, last few days, don't you know what happened in Jerusalem? Okay? Don't you know about Jesus of Nazareth? And then, uh, hindi po nila nakilala ang ating Panginoon. In other words, Ay, itong, labi, itong dalawang disciples, they did not recognize the resurrected Jesus Christ. Amen? Okay? Kausap nila ang ating Panginoon. But you know what? Ang pinakamadaling gawin ni Jesus Christ ay magpakilala. Pwede naman siya magpakilala. Well, ako si Jesus. Ako yung nabuhay na maguli. And yet, ang, ang, ang ginawa po ni Jesus Christ ay uh, He went to the Scripture. He went to the Scripture. Doon sa ating unang binasa. Doon sa verse... Uh, 27. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, Jesus Christ expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Now, whenever we read the word scriptures in the four gospels and even in the epistles of the Apostle Paul and the other letters in the New Testament, the word scriptures would always refer to the Old Testament scriptures as we know them today. Okay, yung Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, you know, Book of Psalms, Book of Proverbs, you know, yung mga sinuot po ng mga propeta. 
and, and so on and so forth. Okay, so yung po scriptures from, from, from Genesis to Malachi, yung po Old Testament scriptures. Every time the New Testament would refer to the scriptures, the written word, the New Testament would always refer to the Old Testament scriptures. Nung mga panahon po yun. Okay? So Jesus Christ expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Now the word scripture simply means the written word. Yung po scriptures, ang ibig sabihin po niyan ay the written word. Script means to write, the written word. So, Jesus Christ expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. This tells us one thing, that the scripture or the written word is all about Jesus Christ, the living word. Amen? The written word is all about Jesus Christ, the living word. Ang Biblia po ay patungkol kay Jesus Christo. The Bible is all about Jesus Christ, what he has done, who he is. It is all about Jesus Christ and the living word of God. It is all about Jesus Christ. Amen? So the Bible is not about do's and don'ts. The Bible is not about a book of rules and regulation. Hindi po yun ang Biblia. Although we, 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 can, we can read a lot about you know, those do's and don'ts in the Bible, particularly in, in the commandments under the law of Moses. Thou shalt do this, thou shalt not do this, thou shalt do this, thou shalt not do this, and so on and so forth. But the Bible is all about Jesus Christ and what He has done. It is all about Jesus Christ, who He is, and what He has done. So today I would like to share with you a message simply entitled, Discovering Jesus Throughout the Entire Bible. Discovering Jesus Throughout the Entire Bible. It, 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 uh, ibig po sabihin, every time we read the Bible, every time we... We, we study the Bible. It's all about discovering Jesus. It is all about discovering Jesus Christ, who He is, uh, God's plan of redemption, God's plan of salvation. It is all about discovering the finished work of the cross. It is all about discovering, you know, who we are in Christ Jesus because of what He has done on the cross of Calvary. It's all about Jesus. Okay? So, yun po ang Biblia. Now, many times, you know, the things concerning himself in the New Testament is being referred to as mystery. The mystery of Jesus Christ, the mystery of the church, the mystery that was hidden before the foundation of the earth. So, mystery. Now, mystery simply means a uh, uh, hidden truth. Mga katotohanan ng itinago. Hidden truth. Yung po ibig sabihin ng mystery. Mystery comes from the Greek word mysterion. It means to say truth or things that were hidden. Now, many times we say that the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. And the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. But there is a better way of saying that. The Old Testament is Jesus Christ concealed. In other words, in the Old Testament, Jesus Christ was concealed. Jesus Christ was hidden uh, uh, in the Old Testament scriptures. In the New Testament, Jesus Christ is being revealed. Amen? Jesus Christ is now being revealed in the New Testament scriptures. When I say New Testament scriptures, I'm referring to the letters written by the Apostle Paul to different churches. His letters are uh, written to some individual Christians like Timothy, like Titus, and, 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 and Philemon. And also, that would include the letters of Peter, the letters of John, the beloved, the letters of Jude. So you put on New Testament scriptures. Now, in the New Testament scriptures, Jesus Christ is now being revealed. But in the Old Testament, Jesus Christ uh, somehow was concealed. Jesus Christ was hidden in the Old Testament scriptures. Amen? Okay, so uh, uh, we can find, in other words, we can find Jesus in every page of the Bible. Whether we are uh, uh, reading the Old Testament scriptures or we are reading the New Testament scriptures, we can discover Jesus Christ, we can find who Jesus Christ is, and what Jesus Christ has already done. Amen? Now, in the Old Testament scriptures, many times Jesus Christ uh, is hidden in uh, the, the, the form of types and shadows and pictures. Okay? That's why uh, the Old Testament scriptures... It was originally written in the Hebrew language. Why? Because the Hebrew language is a picture language. 
just like the Chinese language and the Korean language, when you read, you know, the, the, the Korean characters or, or the Japanese characters or the Chinese characters, yung po mga characters, yung po mga letters na bubuo po ng, ng, uh, ng uh, Chinese alphabet or whatever, ito po ay mga picture. Okay? Every letter has a corresponding picture, just like the Hebrew language. The Hebrew language, every letter in the Hebrew language has a corresponding picture. Okay? Not only that, every letter has a corresponding numbers. Halimbawa, yung, yung Alep, the first, uh, the first letter in the Hebrew uh, uh, alphabet, Alep means uh, 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 it has a corresponding picture, a picture of an ox. Okay? Yung pong pic- pinipicture po ng Alep ay ox. Ox. Yung pong, uh, 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 yung pong, what do you call that? A, a, a male bull, something like that, or a male cow, something like that. At, at yung pong uh, second letter, yung pong bet, it is a picture of a house. Bet, alep, okay, bet, and so on and so forth. And then, and then yung alep, the first letter, ang corresponding number nito ay one. The second letter, two. The third letter, three. Hanggang, and so on and so forth. So, every letter has a corresponding picture, and it has a corresponding a number and also it has a corresponding musical note okay that's the beauty of the hebrew language that's why if you read the hebrew language and each letter has a corresponding note you can you, you can uh, create a music meron music na maki create because every letter has its corresponding musical note so that's the hebrew language so the best language that can hide <coughs> that can conceal jesus christ would be a picture language like the Hebrew language. Amen? Now, in the New Testament, the New Testament, in the New Testament, Jesus Christ is now being revealed plainly and clearly. Okay? Kaya ang ginamit po, para maisulat po yung, yung, yung Greek New Testament, ay uh, yung, pong, uh, yung pong Koine Greek. Yung Koine Greek, ito po ay, ay, uh, ay lingwahe na kaya po maintindihan lahat po ng tao. Kahit maging yung mga uneducated, hindi nakapag-aral, ito po ay pwede po nilang maintindihan. Ito po ay inimbento po nung panahon po ni, ni Alexander the Great. Now, before the Roman Empire, we had the Greek Empire under Alexander the Great. Nagpalabas po ng decree si Alexander the Great na lahat ng mga lugar na kanyang nasasakupan dapat ay iisang lingwa ay lamang ang, uh, ang uh, meron ang mga tao. So, he, they came up with the Koine or strip language, Greek, Koine Greek. Ito'y kakaiba po sa uh, uh, classical Greek. Ito po ay Koine Greek na kung saan po ito po yung, yung ginagamit po doon sa kalye. Yung po, ang, yung po ang language na ginamit para isulat po ang New Testament. Anong purpose? Upang sa ganon, hindi kailangan po ang isang tao nung panahon yun ay maging edukado para maintindihan ang New Testament. Amen? Hindi ka na kailangan ikaw nakapagtapos ng university para maintindihan mo yung pong sulat ni Apostol Pablo. Because, you know, the, 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 the letters, the New Testament books were written in a common language, street language, koine Greek language that can be understood by everybody. Amen? Why? Because the purpose of the New Testament is to reveal Jesus Christ. Okay? Now, so, the scriptures... Now, Jesus Christ said, the scripture is all about himself. So, he expounded scriptures concerning himself. The scripture is written, uh, it is all about Jesus, and we can find Jesus on every page of the Old Testament scripture. And the more we see Jesus in the Old Testament, the more we understand the good news of what he has already accomplished for us today. Amen? We can find a lot of pictures of Jesus Christ, a lot of, a, 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 a lot of types and shadows of Jesus Christ in the entire Old Testament. Okay? Hindi po, uh, kulang po ang buong maghapon para ito po yung isa po namin. Natin, magbibigay lang po ako ng, ng ilang mga, mga picture of Jesus. Halimbawa po, under the law of Moses, sa Old Testament, kapag ka, meron po mga hudyo na sila po yung nagkasala, sila po yung nagkamali, ang gagawin po nila, sila po ay magtuturo doon sa kalang priest. They will go to the priest at meron po silang daladalang uh, animal sacrifice. Either ito po ay goat or kambing o ito po ay sheep o ito po ay turtle dove. Depende po doon sa social status 
nung pong, uh, nung pong uh, uh, hudyo. So, kapag dinala po niya yung kanyang sacrifice na animal doon po sa priest, anong gagawin ng priest? The priest would examine the animal sacrifice. Kung ito po ay blameless, kung ito po ay malinis, kung ito po ay walang kapintasan. Okay? Now, yung pong animal sacrifice ang ini-examine nung pong priest. Hindi po yung may dala na nagkasala. Kaya hindi po yung taong nagkasala ay ini-examine po ng priest. Ang ini-examine po ng priest ay yung pong dala-dala po niyang animal sacrifice ko ito po ay blameless, ko ito po ay malinis, ko ito ay walang kapintasan. Kapag ito po ay blameless, malinis, walang kapintasan, ang gagawin po, yung pong nagkasala, ipapatong niya ang kanyang kamay doon sa ulo noong pong uh, dala niyang animal sacrifice. It is a picture na ang kanyang kasalanan ay nalilipat doon sa Uh, sa daladala po niyang hayop. Amen? At pagkatapos papatayin po yung hayop. Ibig sabihin po, uh, yung kasalanan ay, ay nalipat doon sa animal sacrifice. At, uh, at uh, meron pa isang, isang hayop po, uh, kadalasan po kambing, na kung saan po yung kambing naman ito ay pakakawalan. Okay? Doon sa wilderness. So it was, yung pong hayop na pinatay, ay ito po ay larawan ng kamatayan ni Kristo at yung pong kambing o yung hayop na pinakawalan, ito po ay larawan po ng muling pagkabuhay ni Jesus. Amen? Yung kambing po ay uh, he took away the kambing, larawan po ito na yung kasalanan po natin ay kinuha, inalis na sa atin ng ating Panginoong Jesus. Amen? So ito po yung mga larawan ni Jesus Christ doon po sa Old Testament. So, so everything that we see concerning Jesus in the Old Testament are in the form of types and shadows and, 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 and pictures. Now go with me to the book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1. For the law, the law of Moses, for the law having a shadow of things to come and not the very, very image of the things. In other words, the law is a shadow. It is not the very image of the things. The law can never, with those sacrifices which they offered you by year, continually make the comers thereunto perfect. So there's something that we need to understand about the law. There's something that we need to understand about the law of Moses. The law of Moses was just a shadow. Jesus is the reality. Amen? Okay? The law, the old covenant, was just a shadow. Jesus Christ is the reality. Now, you can read that. In the book of Colossians chapter 2, Colossians chapter 2, verse 16, Let no man therefore judge you in meat, or in food, or in drink, or in respect of a holiday, or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath days. These were commandments under the law of Moses. Okay? Then the next verse, verse 17. Which are, all of these commandments under the law of Moses, are a shadow of things to come. But, sabi natin, but, but the body, or the reality, is... Christ. Amen? The body or the reality is Christ. So the law was a shadow. Jesus Christ is the reality. Amen? Now the shadow cannot bring you can bring you nowhere. The shadow cannot bring you anywhere. Amen? Halimbawa po, good illustration. Halimbawa po, meron pong aeroplano 7, 747 jumbo jet na dumaan sa may uh, uh, bubungan ng inyong, uh, ng inyong uh, bahay at nagkataon po na tirik ang araw. At nung dumaan po yung aeroplano, ay uh, nag-create ito ng shadow doon po sa kalye na sa harap ninyo bahay. Amen? Na yung pang anino ng aeroplano, kaya ka pang dalihin ang anino sa Los Angeles? Kaya, ba, kaya ka pang dali, dalihin ang anino sa, you know, sa San Francisco o sa Europe? Yung anino ng aeroplano? Of course not. Amen? Okay? Pero yung aeroplano mismo, kaya ka dalihin doon sa uh, Los Angeles, Right? Yung aeroplano mismo, yung reality. Yung airplane, pwede kang dalhin kahit saan. Pero yung anino ng airplane, hindi ka pwedeng dalhin uh, 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 kahit saan lugar. Amen? So in other words, the law was just a shadow. The law of Moses cannot bring you into salvation. The law of Moses cannot bring you into, you know, eternal life. The law of Moses cannot bring you into the kingdom of God. But thank God, Jesus Christ is the reality. Jesus Christ, the reality, can bring you into the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ, the reality, the truth, the way, and the life, can bring you into, you know, into salvation. Amen? Thank God. Hallelujah. Under the old covenant, 
Lahat na ay shadow and fiction. But thank God, Jesus Christ came and He is the reality. Not only He is real, not only He is uh, truth, but if you are a believer, Christ is living and dwelling on the inside of you. You have the reality inside you. You have the truth inside you. You have the life of God inside you. And His name is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise God forevermore. Okay? Hallelujah. Now, in the four Gospels, now, now you know, uh, probably uh, by, by next Sunday, kung ito'y itutuloy po natin next Sunday, I will be uh, sharing more of these pictures uh, uh, that we see concerning Jesus in the Old Testament Scriptures. But in the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, okay, Jesus mainly spoke to the Jews and invited them to come to him now jesus christ mainly spoke to the jews in the four gospels now we need to understand that 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 that, that although the four gospels matthew mark luke and john was written uh, uh more than 30 years after the resurrection but what we read in matthew mark luke and john were all under the old covenant amen now bago po yun tingnan po natin sa hebrews chapter 4 verse 4 Hebrews chapter 4, verse 4. In Hebrews chapter 4, in, in, in Galatians, as you say, Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4, verse 4, uh, it says there that, that, that Jesus Christ was, was born, uh, but when the fullness of the time was come, God sent for the Son, made of a woman, or born of a woman. In the New Kingdom's version, please. Born of a woman, born under the law. Okay, so when Jesus Christ was born in Bethlehem, not only he was born of a woman, he was born under the law. In other words, when Jesus Christ was born in Bethlehem, the old covenant of law, the law of Moses, was still valid. The old covenant of law, the law of Moses, was still in effect. Amen? So he, when he was born, he was born under the law. The next verse, verse 5, to redeem those who were under the law. So there were people who were under the law, when Jesus Christ was born. Sino itong mga taong ito na nasa ilalim po ng batas? The Jewish people. To redeem those who were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. Okay? So we need to understand that. So Jesus Christ primarily, He ministered to those who were under the law and invited them to come to Him. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Jesus Christ told these people, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Amen? Now we need to understand, during the time of Jesus, yung old covenant of Moses became a religion. Judaism. Okay? Naging religion na po, walang pinag-iba po sa Buddhism, walang pinag-iba sa Hinduism, walang pinag-iba po sa Taoism, yung po Judaism nung panahon po ni Jesus Christ. Kaya hindi po nila, hindi po nila na, na, natanggap ang, ang kapahayagan kung bakit binigay ng Diyos ang batas sa kanila. Ang kalaw nila, binigay ng Diyos ang batas, yung Ten Commandments and the other commandments under the Lord Moses para ito'y kanilang gawin, para ito'y sundin. Kaya pag nasunod nila, then sila'y pwedeng maligtas. Sila'y pwedeng magkaroon ng buhay ng walanggan and so on and so forth. Just like the rest of the other religions in the world. Kaya nakakapagod po. Alam ni Jesus Christ na ang mga taong ito'y pagod na pagod na. Kaya inibitahan ng ating Panginoon, Come unto me, all of you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Amen? Don't you know na ang religion po'y nakakapagod? Okay? Because religion requires a lot of things from you. Religion would demand a lot of things from you. Nakakapagod po. Imagine, meron po mga religion na bago ka makapanalangin sa iyong Diyos, kinakailangan mo na magsakripisyo ka. Okay, most of this. Like, like you, you, I, I'm not trying to put down any religion. Don't get me wrong. Like, like yung po mga Buddhists, yung po mga Hindus. Kadalasan po, yung kanilang uh, place of prayer ay nasa bundok. Okay? Kinakailangan magpagod ka muna. Kinakailangan, you know, magsakripisyo ka muna. At uh, when we were in Malaysia, uh, uh, there, uh, we have this, uh, this temple. Okay? At yung mga tao po, para makapanalangin sila, they have to climb uh, mga 400 something steps kinakailangan ay, ay you know ay aakit ka muna ng, ng napakataas 
bago, ka maka, bago mo makausap ang iyong Diyos. Kina kailangan magsakripisyo ka muna sa paniniwala na hanggat hindi nakikita ng Diyos na ang iyong paghihirap, hanggat hindi nakikita ng Diyos ang iyong sakripisyo, hindi ka pakikinga ng Diyos. That's religion. Nakakapagod. Amen? Okay? Kaya hindi ka takataka po na uh, uh, sa mga bansang Korea and, and, uh, and, 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 and India and even Malaysia, ay marami silang mga tinatagkot, inakot, mga prayer mountains. Okay? Pagkat yung po ang, ang, ang kanila pong ang turo ng kalang religion. But you don't have to do that. Jesus Christ, invite these people, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Next verse, please. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, let, let's try to read this in the message translation. If you have the message translation, beginning verse 28. Okay? So Jesus Christ was inviting these religious people. Are you tired? Worn out? Burn out on religion. So, nakita natin, ang religion po'y nakaka-burn out. Amen? Are you tired? Kaway, pagod na pagod na, worn out, burn out on religion. Jesus Christ said, come to me, get away with me, and you will recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Amen? Praise God. Christianity is supposed to be, you know, resting in Christ. Come on. Christianity uh, uh, should be resting in Christ and, and in the finished work of Jesus Christ. But if we don't know this, matutulad po tayo ng ibang mga tao na kabilang po sa ibang reliyon. Kaya a lot of believers, a lot of Christians, because they don't understand the finished work of Jesus Christ, they are trying to finish an already finished work. They are trying to complete an already completed work. Okay? And not only that, they are trying to defeat an already defeated devil. Okay, but, but once we receive the revelation of Jesus Christ and what He has done, we will begin to rest in Him. Faith, new covenant faith, is simply resting in the Lord Jesus Christ and in the finished work of the cross. Amen? Okay, so are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Next verse, please. Walk with me and work with me. What's how I do it? You know, some people say, well, you know, uh, 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 ibig sabihin baga, kung lahat ay tapos na, tin- ginawa ni Kristo lahat, wala tayong gagawin. You know, some people, they are, they are, they are uh, afraid na kung saan kapag tayo nagtuyo, nagturo ng, ng, ng gospel of grace, eh, we are giving people license to be lazy. Hindi po yun ang sinasabi ni Jesus Christ. Although He said, come to me and I will give you rest. And yet He said, walk with me and work with me. Amen? Work with me. Okay? Does this imply laziness? No, we are working. But we are not working on our own strength. We are not working on our own human effort. We are not working on our own intellect. We are not working on our own uh, 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 effort, so to speak. We are working with Jesus. Okay? Work with me and work with me. What's how? Who will do the work? What's how? I, Jesus Christ said, what's how I do it? So once you, 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 you work with Him, the Bible tells us we are co-laborers with God. Amen? Although we are co-laborers with God, it is not a 50-50 effort. Okay? 50% my effort, 50% the Lord's effort. No, no, no. We are working with God, and the beauty about this is, we are working with Him, yes, but it is... 100% the Lord working in us and through us. Amen. Amen? Learn the enforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Amen? Praise God. Okay? Now, let's go on. So, in Mark chapter 1, verse 14 to 15. Mark chapter 1, verse 14 to 15. Now, after that, John was put in prison. John the Baptist. He was put in prison. Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. The next verse. And saying, so this is the gospel of the kingdom of God. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Sabi natin, repent and believe. 
Say again, repent and believe. Notice that true repentance is always connected to believing. It has nothing to do with our behavior, outward behavior. You know, repent uh, from your, you know, from your sins or your wrongdoings. It has nothing to do with that. Amen? So Jesus Christ is speaking to the Jews. He was saying, what he was saying is, repent, change your mind, change the way you think, change your belief system, and believe the gospel. Amen? So repentance... True repentance is simply changing the way we think. Okay? Changing our belief system. Now, what was the belief system of the Jews? Ano ba ang belief system ng mga Hudyo na dapat nilang baguhin? Okay? At palitan ng panibago ang belief system. Ano ba ang kalang belief system? The Jews believe that they have to do their part first before God can do His part. Amen? Yung pong paniniwala po ng mga Hudyo. Kinakalang gawin ko muna yung... Uh, uh, dapat kong gawin bago ang Diyos gawin niya ang uh, kinakailangan niya gawin. Okay? Kinakailangan magpatawad muna ako. I have to forgive first before God can forgive me second. I have to obey first before God can bless me second. I have to give first before God can give to me second. I have to love first before God can love me second. Okay? I have to do my part first before God can do His part second. That is the belief system of the Jews. That is a performance-based belief system. Amen? So, Jesus Christ, when He said, repent, change the way you think, what He was saying was, you need to change your belief system from having a performance-based belief system into a grace-based belief system. Amen? So, that is, a, that is repentance. That is renewing the mind. Now, renewing the mind is simply renewing your mind from having a performance-based mindset into having a grace-based mindset. Amen? What is a grace-based mindset? It is believing in Jesus Christ and the finished work of the cross. Iyan po ay kabaligtaran po ng belief system ng mga Hudyo. Okay? Ang new covenant. Ay kabaligtaran po ng old covenant. Baligtad po. Parang, parang uh, tawagin po natin, polar opposite. Under the old covenant, you have to do your part first before God can do His part second. Under the new covenant, after the cross, because of what Jesus Christ has done, you know, God did His part first, and as a response, you can do your part. Amen? Okay? Hallelujah. God has already forgiven you of all your sins. That's why you can forgive one another. That's new covenant. Forgive one another, even as God in Christ Jesus has already forgiven you of all your sins. Under the new covenant, you know, the reason why we can give, because God himself, he first gave to us. He has blessed us with all his spiritual blessings in heavenly places. God already has uh, given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. God has blessed us with so much. Amen? Siya ang unang nagbigay. Siya ang unang nagmahal. Siya ang unang gumawa. Parang kanta yun, ha? Okay? So, yun po yung old covenant. Magkabalik ka. Under the new covenant, ikaw muna ang gagawa bago makagawa ang Diyos. Under the new covenant, ang Diyos ang unang gumawa. Amen? Lahat ng ating ginagawa, it is just our passive response to what God has already done. Amen? Believing the gospel. Believing the good news about Jesus Christ and what Jesus Christ has done. So, that is repentance. Yung po ang tunay na ibig sabihin po ng repentance. A change of thinking, a change of the belief system. So we are talking about major changes from the old to the new covenant. Amen? Now John chapter 16 verse 12. Let's go to the four gospels. So makita po natin how the revelation of Christ unfolded you know, in the Bible. From the Old Testament scriptures to the four Gospels, and then later on, uh, in the letters uh, of the New Covenant. Now, John chapter 16, verse 12, Jesus Christ told His disciples, You know what? I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Verse 13, However, when He, the Spirit of truth, is come, He will guide you into all truth, 
For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show things to come. So in other words, magin yung mga disciples ng ating Panginoon. Although they were with Jesus almost every day, for more than three years, yung po mga disciples ng ating Panginoon, halos araw-araw, kasama po nila si Jesus Christ. Mahigit na tatlong taon. But you know what? Bagamat narinig po nila ang mga teachings ng ating Panginoon, pero hindi po nila ito maunawaan. Most of the teachings of Jesus Christ, they never understood. Amen? Jesus Christ was looking forward to the cross one day, at ang, ang sinasabi po niya na iaalay niya ang kanyang buhay, at uh, pagkalipat tatlong araw, siya mabubuhay na maguli. And then guess what? Sabi ni Peter, no, 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 no. Okay? Hindi mo pwedeng gawin yan. Okay? Ako na lang ang gagawa para sa iyo. So, pinigilan siya ni Peter. That's why Jesus Christ uh, responded by saying, Get thee behind me, Satan. Okay? One time, Jesus Christ was with his disciples. Ang sabi ng Panginoon, sa kanyang mga disciples, You know what? Except you drink my blood and eat my flesh, you have no life in you. Amen? Hindi lang labing dalawang disciples ang kasama niya. Kasama niya yung other disciples. Marami po, hundreds of them. Okay? Guess what happened? Okay, hindi nila naintindihan. And then, uh, kala nila, tinuturuan sila ni Jesus Christ ng cannibalism. Imagine, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, there is no life in you. So, anong ginawa ng mga disciples? They walk away from Jesus. Natira lamang po yung labing dalawa. Okay? So in other words, dito na maintindihan sinasabi ni Jesus Christ. That was a new covenant truth. That Jesus Christ was uh, 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 was uh, speaking to them. And yet, these people cannot understand. Why? Because it takes the Holy Spirit to understand the Bible. It takes the Holy Spirit to understand the new covenant truth. Amen? At nung mga panahon po yun, although yung mga disciples si Jesus Christ, although they were followers of Jesus Christ, okay, and yet, they don't have the Holy Spirit in them. They, they were not yet born again. Pwede natin sabihin, they were saved, quote and unquote, they were saved. They were followers of Jesus Christ under the new covenant, under the old covenant. They were, they were believers. And yet, they were not born again uh, believers like you and me. They don't have the Holy Spirit. They didn't have the Holy Spirit in them. Amen? Why? Dahil si Jesus Christ ay hindi pa namamatay, nabubuhay na maguli. Bago po maborn again isang tao, kinakailang si Kristo ay mamatay muna at mabuhay na maguli. The moment Jesus Christ rose from the dead, the Bible was very clear that Jesus Christ was the firstborn among many brethren. Jesus Christ was the firstborn among, uh, the firstborn from spiritual death. Amen? So kung siya po yung firstborn among many brethren, before the cross, wala pong taong born again. Amen? But thank God, after the, thank God, the cross of Jesus Christ changed everything. After the cross, okay, today, tayo po mga believers, hindi lamang tayo pinanganak mula sa Espiritu, not only we were born of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the third person of God, came to dwell on the inside of us. Okay? So it takes the Holy Spirit to understand the Bible. I don't care. Maaring ang isang tao po ay matalinong tao, maaring siya po ay bar top notcher, maaring siya po ay merong doctorate degree in philosophy sa Harvard University, pero kung hindi siya born again, kung wala siyang Holy Spirit, na nasa kanya, hindi niya maintindihan ang Biblia. Maaring maintindihan po niya yung mga, mga, mga batas ng tao. Amen? Maaring siya maging eksperto when it comes to uh, 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 the law of, of, of the land. Okay? Yung mga Supreme Court ruling. Okay, and, and so on and so forth. Yung constitution and, 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 and all, y- yung po mga batas. Maaari siya maging eksperto po doon. Pero kung hindi siya born again at wala siyang Holy Spirit, hindi po niya maindi nilang Biblia. Are you still with me? So it takes the Holy Spirit to understand the new covenant truth. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ said, you know what? Maaari hindi niyo maintindihan sa ngayon ang mga itinuturo ko Maring, you know, uh, 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 you, you don't understand what, what I'm saying right now, but time will come, you know, that the Holy Spirit will, will come to you, but when the Holy Spirit, what, what, or however, when He, the Spirit of truth, is come, He, the Holy Spirit, will guide you into all truth. The Holy Spirit will, will not speak of Himself. He will teach you all things. He will guide you into how many truth? He will guide you into how many truth? 
all truth. Amen. Thank God you have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. You have you have the teacher living on this. You have the comforter. You have the helper. You have the, you have the advocate, the counselor, the strengthener, the standby, living, dwelling on the inside of you. Amen? You know what? As your pastor, I can only be with you. You know, the most is two hours a week. Okay? The most is two hours a week. I can only be with you, you know? Just like, just like that right now. But you know what? Okay. The Holy Spirit is with you. 24-7, 365. And the Holy Spirit is much, as much greater teacher than me. Amen. You no, know, no, 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 probably, you know, the first few years of my ministry, probably, you know, uh, uh, Sunday evening, you know, I, I, I would always, uh, 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 I would always uh, review what happened. The whole day Sunday. And then, meron po ako mga agam-agam noon na naiintindihan kaya ng kongregasyon yung aking mga na-share sa kanila. Okay? Bukas, babalik sila. Marami sa kanila, babalik sa trabaho. Iba, babalik sa kanilang eskwelahan. You know? Uh, okay? Something like that. So, so parang ganun, iniisip pa rin mga tao. Until the revelation of grace. Amen? Today, you know what? Okay? After I, I, I share with you the gospel of Jesus Christ, Tonight, I can sleep like a baby. Amen. Amen? All I would do is pray the, the same prayer that Apostle uh, Paul prayed in Acts chapter 20. Okay? Those of you who receive right now, are you receiving the gospel of grace right now? Amen. Do you have God inside you? Amen. Okay? So I could pray the same prayer that Paul prayed. And, and I, can, I, I can pray a prayer like this. Father, I commend these people, this entire congregation unto God. The God who is living and dwelling on the inside of them. The God who will never leave them. The God who will never forsake them. And I commend them unto you. And unto the word of your grace. Which is able to build them up. And to give them the inheritance together with all the saints. Amen. You have God. You have the Holy Ghost. With you 24 hours a day. 7 days a week. 365 days a year. Moment by moment. The Holy Spirit is with you and in you. And the Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth. If you needed wisdom, if you needed to make a decision in life, the Holy Spirit is your counselor. Okay? When, 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 when you are weak, the Holy Spirit is your strengthener. Amen? Whenever you are confused, the Holy Spirit is your teacher. Come on. And He is living on the inside of you. I can never take the place of the Holy Spirit in your life. All I can do is preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, exalt Jesus Christ, and magnify what is done. That's it. Amen? Okay? But the Spirit of God is always in you and with you. You know, a, a, lot, of, a lot of pastors, a lot of pastors, they are trying to take the role and the place of the Holy Spirit in the lives of the people in the church. Ang iniisip nila, kinakailangan malaman ng mga kongresyo namin, ng mga membro ng aming church, kung anong tama, anong mali, para sila'y makalakad sa, sa tama. Kinakailangan pa alam ko yung sakala, tama. You know, kinakailangan pa alam sa sakala yung mali. Ito yung mga tama ang gawin, ito yung mga maling, dapat hindi nyo inyagawa. You know, babalik na naman tayo sa three of the knowledge of good and evil. The gospel is not about knowing good and knowing what is evil. The gospel is about knowing Jesus Christ, who He is, and what He has done. Amen. Okay? And the Spirit of God, once you have the revelation of Jesus Christ, His gospel, then the Spirit of God can, can move freely in your life. Moment by moment. Praise God. So, Jesus Christ said to His disciples, you know, uh, 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 there are many things that I, I, I would like to tell you, but, but, you know, but right now, you, you may not understand those things. But when the Spirit of God comes to you, okay, and He was referring to the new covenant, He will lead you into all truth. He will teach you all things. Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, so that is the gospel. So we need to understand that even in the gospel, the four gospels, ay, yung pong mga sarili disciples of Jesus Christ, 
Hindi po nila ma- maunawaan ang lubusan. Yung po mga nais na ituro ng Panginoon sa kanila. Amen? But thank God, the cross of Jesus Christ changed everything. When, when you begin to read the book of Acts, malaking pagbabago po sa kanila. Amen? So si Pedro po, na, na para bagang napakahirap niyang unawain ang ating Panginoon, siya po ang unang tumayo to preach the gospel after they received the Holy Spirit on the day of the Pentecost. Naunawa na po nila. At least, uh, hindi man full revelation. But they have to, they have to, you know, uh, uh, they have to grow also in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Even in, even with the Holy Spirit in them. Even with the Holy Spirit with them. Okay? Kinakailangan pa rin po na yung mga apostles, kinakailangan pa rin po nilang lumago, mag-grow. Okay? Sa kanilang pagkaalam patungkol po sa ating Panginoon sa Kristo. And it took, you know, it took a while for them. Now, a good example would be Peter. Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 3. He was, Acts chapter 2, he was filled with the Holy Spirit. And yet, it was, it was not until Acts chapter 10 that he became to, that, 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 that he came to know that the gospel is not for the Jews only. It was for the Gentiles as well. It was only in Acts chapter 10, many years after the day of the Pentecost. Amen? Doon lamang nila naunawaan na ang ginawa ni Kristo hindi lamang para sa mga Hudyo. Akala po nila para lamang sa mga Hudyo. Kasi nasanay po sila nung sila po ay, ay ipinadala ng ating Panginoon. When Jesus Christ sent them two by two as disciples, ang sabi ni Jesus Christ sa kala, huwag kayong pupunta sa mga hintil, sa mga Hudyo lamang kayo dapat pumunta. Amen? So yun pong alam po nila na ang ginawa ni Kristo ay para lamang sa mga Hudyo. Salvation is only for the Jew. It was only... It was, it was only after several years that Peter came to realize okay, that, that salvation is not just for the Jew, salvation is for the Gentiles as well. Amen? Remember in Acts chapter 10? Okay? He had a vision, and then those a vision na yun ay, ay meron pong blanket, na meron pong mga iba't ibang uri po ng mga hayop na under the law of Moses, hindi po ito pwedeng kainin ng mga Hudyo. At ang sabi ng Panginoon sa kanya, Okay, Peter, okay, kill and eat. Kill and eat. Ang sabi ni Peter, you know what, Lord, alam mo naman sa buong buhay ko, hindi ako talaga kumain ng mga, mga uh, pagkain pinagbabawal under the law of Moses. So, imagine that, Acts chapter 10 na, pero si Peter mismo, ay uh, meron po mga, meron pang mga kautusan ni Moses na pinipilit niyang i-observe. Amen? He was still, you know, operating under the law of Moses in some areas of his life. And then God said, uh, sabi sa kanya, Pakino, wag mong tawaging marumi ang mga bagay na nilinis ko na. Amen? And of course, the message was, sa mga hudyo, ang tingin po nila sa mga hintil, marumi. Pero sabi po ng Panginoon, wag mong tawaging marumi ang mga bagay na nilinis ko na. Okay? And then sabi po ng Panginoon, meron darating, susundo sa iyo. At sumama ka, and then, sa lugar na yun, you preach Jesus Christ. And then, sa unang pagkakataon, Peter preached sa isang bahay na ang nakatila, isang hintil. Cornelius, Acts chapter 10. He preached the gospel to the Gentiles. And then the Gentiles, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. They, they spoke with other tongues and they got saved. Amen? And Peter was amazed. Okay? Yun nangyari po yun ay isang katibayan po na ang kaligtasan ay hindi lamang para sa mga Hudyo. Ito ay para din sa mga hintil. Amen? Okay? So, it took a while before they realized that. Imagine, Acts chapter 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then Acts chapter 10, probably mga 10 years after the resurrection, before they came to realize that salvation is not just for the Jew, salvation is also for the Gentiles as well. Amen? And it was finally settled in Acts chapter 15. Okay? When they had this a meeting in Jerusalem when they had this Jerusalem council, so to speak, na nasettle na po yung issue na ang kaligtasan po hindi lamang para sa mga Hudyo, kaligtasan po ay para sa lahat ng tao. Amen? So, they have to grow as well. Okay? Kaya, uh, nung, nung ito po yung mabasa ko, I, I, uh, it helps me. It helps me a lot to understand, you know, some other pastors para maging patient doon sa iba pang mga, mga pastor, ibang mga mananampalataya. 
na kung saan ay para bagang uh, napakatagal para matanggap nila bago na matanggap yung kapahayagan patungkol sa New Covenant Truth. So, ganun din si Pedro. Ganun din mga original disciples. It took them, you know, several years before they finally understood the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So, uh, and then uh, we go to the epistles. Now, yung po mga epistles, yung po mga letters, I, uh, I'm referring to the letters of the Apostle Paul to several churches like his letters to the Roman Christian, Romans, uh, uh, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Colossians, Ephesians, uh, Philippians, uh, uh, Thessalonians, and so on and so forth. And his letters to individual Christians like Timothy and, and Titus, and the letters of uh, Peter and, and James and, and John. Okay, yung po mga letters in the New Testament. Amen? Those are mga letters po. Yung po mga letters, those were the letters directed towards the church. Okay, ito po yung mga letter na, na, na isinulat po directly to the church, to the believers. Amen? At doon po sa mga letters, ay wala na po itinatago. Jesus Christ being revealed, the new covenant truth is being revealed in those letters. Are you still here with me? Now, we have, we have to study the Bible, the entire Bible. As I said, ang, 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 ang uh, title po na message na ito ay Discovering Jesus all throughout the entire Bible. So, we need to read, we need to study the entire Bible. Amen? Pero, ang dapat bigyan po natin ng uh, focus, okay, ay yung po mga letters, yung po mga epistles ni Apostle Paul. Yung po, doon tayo mag-concentrate, doon tayo mag-focus. Amen? Yes, we need to read, you know, the entire Bible, we need to study the entire Bible, but we need to focus more on the New Testament epistles. I learned this early in my Christian life, and it helped me a lot. In, in early in my Christian life, you know, I, I read a, a, a book by, written by Kenneth Hagin, okay, In Christ Realities, and some other books. It was there that, that uh, I, I read that he, that, that he was strongly uh, suggesting, not just suggesting, amen? He was, he was uh, 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 saying that, yes, you need to read the entire Bible, but focus on the epistles because those were the letters written directly to the believers born again believers like you amen okay so uh, focus on those letters so we, we can find Jesus in every page of the Bible discovering Jesus all throughout the entire Bible okay so Next, next Sunday, I, I, may, uh, I may share some of the other uh, uh, pictures that we see, that we can see in, in the Old Testament scriptures. But, but uh, when it comes to the letters of Apostle Paul, there's something that we need to understand. Because meron pong, misan po, ako yung nanonood po ng television, it was a local, local uh, television program. At yung pong preachers sa television, I don't know, wala na po ngayon sa television, but nung araw po, ay uh, sinasabi po niya na yung po mga sulat ni Apostol Pablo, huwag niyong basahin. Kasi yung po ay kakaiba. Hindi katulad po ng, ng mga, mga ibang sulat, ng mga original apostles like Peter and John. Or, or yung marami sinasabi si Pablo na hindi natin matatagpuan doon sa Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So as a result, you know, ay nag-conclude siya na Paul was in error. Something like that. Kaya dangerous na basahin yung mga sulat ni Apostol Pablo. Kaya sa kanila po, ay inalis na po nila sa kalang Biblia yung mga sulat ni Apostol Pablo. Now, you know what? In the Bible, in Acts chapter 15, verse 1 and 2 and 8 and 11, so Paul was there in the Jerusalem meeting. He was with Peter and James, you know, and Barnabas and the other the other leaders in the church. Okay, Acts chapter 15, verse 1. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except you be circumcised, after the man of Moses, you cannot be saved. When therefore Paul, so Paul, when therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem 
unto the apostles and elders about this question. So si Pablo po ay, uh, at si Barnabas, sila po yung nagpasya na magtungo sa Jerusalem para pag-usapan. Ito pong issue na ito, patungkol po sa circumcision, patungkol po sa batas ni Moses. Amen? So we don't have time to read everything in Acts chapter 15, but Acts chapter 8, Acts chapter 8, Uh, verse 7, Acts chapter, Acts chapter 15, I should say, Acts chapter 15, verse 7, And when there has been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, you know how that a good while ago, God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. So hear the word of the gospel and believe. Amen? Hear and believe. And God, which know with the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. And put no difference within us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. Then all the multitudes keep silence and gave audience to Barnabas and who? To Barnabas and who? Paul. Amen. So Paul, it was after Peter spoke, Barnabas and Paul spoke. And I believe it was Paul who spoke. Amen? And, 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 and the disciples, including Peter and James, you know, listened to the Apostle Paul. Now go with me this time to 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3. Let's hear what, what Peter had to say concerning the Apostle Paul. Chapter 3 verse 15. And Peter said, An account that the long suffering of our Lord Jesus Christ is salvation. Even as our, as our beloved brother Paul. Ano tinawag po ni, ni Peter kay Paul? Beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, has written unto you. So Peter himself recognized the wisdom that was given to the Apostle Paul. And the wisdom was found in the letters of the Apostle Paul. So he recognized the Apostle Paul as a brother, and he recognized the revelation that the Apostle Paul received. Amen? Next verse. Through his writings. As also in how many? As also in how many? As also in all his epistles or letters, is speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they also the other scriptures unto their own destructions. Amen? So in other words, brothers and sisters, the Apostle Peter himself recognized the ministry of the Apostle Paul. Okay? And it takes the Holy Spirit to understand the writings of the Apostle Paul, the revelation of Jesus Christ, and the finished work of the cross. Amen? Did you learn something today? Come on, just bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for joining us today. And if you have been blessed by today's message, we would like to give you an opportunity to partner with us through your gifts and offerings. You may visit our website at www.jfcf.org for more information. And always remember that with the abundance of God's grace, we can reign in life through Jesus Christ.